In this video, we will see about the correct order of draw while collecting multiple tubes during single vein puncture. There are different types of blood collection tubes with different color code caps and they are to be collected in a specific sequence while doing a blood collection. So first of all, let us see the types of tubes which are used during blood collection. There are blood culture tubes, citrate tubes, plain tubes, heparin tubes, EDTA tubes and fluoride tubes. Now when we are doing blood collection, we have to follow a specific sequence to avoid carryover and contamination of samples which can give erroneous results. So what is the correct sequence of collection? First we will see this correct sequence of blood collection. The first tube should be collected is of blood culture. The blood culture can be of aerobic, anaerobic or pediatric blood collection for culture. The second tube is citrate tube which is of blue color cap and is used for coagulation studies. The third tube is gel separator tube for serum. These are yellow color tubes. The fourth tube is again a serum tube but without gel separator and these are of red color. After that there are green tubes. Green tubes are of two types light green tubes and dark green tubes. Light green tubes contains gel separator tubes which are used for separation of heparin plasma and dark green color tubes are also heparin tubes but are without gel separators plasma. Next to that is a EDTA tube with a purple color cap and finally a fluoride tube with a gray color cap. So this is the specific sequence which should be followed during each blood collection. Now we will see what is the importance of collecting samples in this specific sequence. These tubes contains additives or preservatives that are used for sample collection and preserves the integrity of analyte. The main reasons for adherence to this rule is to avoid the additives from different tubes to be carried over to the other tubes. Additive carryover takes place when the needle filling the tubes comes in contact with the blood and additive mixture in the tube as while this filling. small amount of blood and additive is then carried over to the next tube. The additive carryover also occur when the tube is filling from top to bottom and not only from bottom to top. Phlebotomists should remember that this transfer can occur with both the open and closed system of blood collection. When additives are carried from one tube to another, the result may be dramatically affected. Some examples of this are when EDTA tube is collected before a plain tube or the tube which is used for potassium estimation, the results of potassium will get affected. This is because EDTA is rich in potassium. So when the EDTA is carried over from EDTA tube to a plain tube, it increases the value of potassium also. EDTA is a calcium chelating agent and this can give a false decrease value of magnesium and calcium if the carryover occurs from EDTA tube to the plain tube. The next example is if the blood from clot activator is carried over to the tube that is to be tested for coagulation or blue tubes. Coagulation studies include prothrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time. So when a clot activated tube is collected before a citrate tube, there is a chance of this clot activator can get carried over from plain tube to the citrate tube which will affect the prothrombin time and activated partial th thromboplastin time. And it will result in false low values of both of these parameters. 
one more example of following the correct sequence of blood collection if a culture tube is collected after the collection of any other tubes of blood collection it may cause the contamination of blood culture bottles because of non sterile stoppers so this can give a false contamination of the blood culture so it is necessary to collect the blood culture tube at the first place while doing a culture studies one more example in this respect is whenever a fluoride tube that is a gray stopper tube is collected before a edt tube it affects the morphology of red cells and cell membrane and which can give inaccurate results of hematology parameters also if a fluoride tube or a gray tube is collected before the chemistry studies tube which are plain tubes or heparin tubes it can inhibit the enzymes this will cause a false low values of enzymes in chemistry parameter as fluoride is a specific inhibitor of enzymes so these are some of the examples where it justifies that a specific sequence of sample collection should be followed to avoid the carryover and contamination of additives from one tube to another so i hope all of you have understand the importance of correct sequence of blood collection while tube. doing a single venipuncture for collecting multiple tubes so friends keep following